Hey everybody and welcome to 365. Um, I'm so excited about this week and I know I always say I'm so excited but I really am excited about you learning and growing and going deeper with the Lord and passing these tests when they come your way, right? It's not enough for you just to get this and get excited about it but I want you to start passing the tests that come along with it one day at a time. I like that to be my mantra, like one day at a time, because if you get overwhelmed with this walk, you're not going to take it one day at a time. You're going to be in tomorrow, but tomorrow will deal with itself. Let's just take a moment, take a deep breath, and let's give this week to the Lord. Um, today, this week, we're going to be studying void fillers. What are your void fillers and how are you filling them? So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for my 365 family. I thank you, Lord, that we don't get overwhelmed with the journey and the process. Instead, we just take things one day at a time, and we trust that you're working out everything for our good as we live for you. I pray, Lord, that we'll stay focused on what you need us to do in this season, and we trust you, God. We just cast our care upon you because you care for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And my prayer is that the Lord will, will reveal to you your void fillers this whole week. You're going to get tested in this area. Y'all already know. That's my thing. If we're studying it, you're going to get tested in it. And then you'll start to recognize areas in your life where you have um, voids that you're filling the wrong way. Now, let's go to um, John 4. And what I like about this scripture is Jesus is talking about the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. And um, Samaritans at that time were kind of the disgraced generation. They were looked down upon. So the fact that Jesus was even speaking to her was a really big deal because Jesus wasn't supposed to speak to her because she's considered beneath in that time, in that generation. So Jesus had gone to Samaria on, a, on the way and eventually he came to a Samaritan village of Sekar. Um, he came near the field that Jacob gave his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well at noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because the disciples had gone into the village to buy food. The woman was shocked and surprised, for the Jews refused to have anything to do with the Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift of God, the gift God has for you and who you're speaking to, you would ask me for living water. Verse 11, but sir, you don't have rope. You don't have a bucket and this well is very deep. Um, why, where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give them will never be thirsty again. It, it becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Come on. She's looking for something temporary. She was trying to solve her temporary problem. And if you keep reading, she's like, You'll find out when Jesus said, go get your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. He's right. And Jesus said, you're right. You have five husbands and the man you're living with now is not your husband either. Come on. And so what that shows me is that Jesus was trying to offer her something to fill her voids forever. He, Jesus just doesn't want to like take away your voids and, you know, I'm not going to be happy. No, he's trying to fill your voids with him. And what's happening in the scriptures, he's saying, hey, I notice that you keep on going to those men to become satisfied. You keep on doing these things to become like you're enough, but I'm actually more than enough for you. I want to fill all your voids where you'll never thirst again, where you'll never need again. I want to do that for you. And she's like, man, I want that water. Give me that water. And I believe that we should crave that same water. We shouldn't want to thirst again. And I want you this whole week to be honest with yourself. What are your voids? You might say, well, I don't know. Okay, when you get tested, when you have a rough day at work, when the kids are stressing you out, when you're struggling with your single life, when you've lost your job, where do you go to? What are you going to to complete you, to fill you up? Where's your expectation? It could be that when you're, you know, you're single, you know, you're struggling with your single life, you might 
fill your try fill your that void with you know that desire for sex with pornography or masturbation. Those are voids that God wants to fill. And the thing is this, if you take away an addiction, right? If you take away, you know, pornography, if you take away, and you're not filling it with anything other than God, you're going to get a new addiction. And you might try to fill it with a boyfriend or with a girlfriend. And now you have a new problem of fornication. The thing is, if you give up alcohol, but you're filling that void with anything other than Jesus, you're still going to have a brand new bondage that you're going to have to deal with. Jesus is saying, I want to fill every single void that's in your heart. I want to make you whole. I want you to never thirst again because I'm enough for you. When you have a rough day at work, do you come home and eat a whole pizza? I mean, you get the largest pizza you can get and you don't even taste it. You're just like eating. You're just eating because you're like, oh my gosh, my life. These kids, I'm stressed. It's like you're just filling. You're not even thinking. I challenge you this week, as you get faced with tests, ask yourself, okay, am I going to fill my void with God's word? Or am I going to fill my void with temporary things that will cause for me to thirst again? Let's go to, let's go to Romans 6 really quick. I feel like this one will really encourage you. Romans 6 and 17. Six and seventeen. Romans. Oops. I'm in Romans seven. <laughs> Romans six, verse seventeen. Thank God. Once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we've been giving to you. Now you're free from your slavery to sin, and now you've become slaves to righteous living. What does that tell me? That tells me that I'm no longer a slave to pornography. I'm no longer a slave to alcohol. I'm no longer a slave to lust, comparison, fear, any of those void fillers. I'm no longer in bondage to those things. I'm not a slave to those things. I'm a slave to righteous living. This this tells me, um, in addition, also we can I can put it in the studies for this week, but in 2 Corinthians, it says that God gives us a way out of every single tempting situation that you're faced with. So when you get faced with a test or faced with a temptation, what is your reaction? What are you doing? God is like, I'll give you a way out. You're not a slave to sin anymore. You're a slave to righteous living. You're a slave to choosing what's right because it's right. You're, you're a slave to that. And you don't want the Lord to have to expose you in order for you to change. Instead, he's saying, I will do the private work within you, but I need you to do something different. I recall um, a friend, and she wouldn't mind that I shared this, but I had a dream that she was really struggling with pornography, really struggling. And I reached out to her and I was like, hey, the Lord just told me this and I'm just checking on you and I'm not trying to shame you. I'm just here to encourage you. And, you know, and she's like, oh, my gosh. Like, I can't believe the Lord showed you that. I've really been struggling in this area. I'm struggling with my single life. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'm here to just, I want to help you and walk beside you for your journey of healing. She was constantly filling her desire to be married void with pornography and masturbation to help her, just to help her deal with the season that she's in. And the thing is this, you, you're going to thirst again. You're going to desire the wrong thing over and over again. And God is saying, I can solve your issues. You don't have to thirst again. In me, you have fullness of joy. In me, you have hope. In me, you have strength to keep going. In me, you got to trust my timing. Come on, we just came off of a study of trusting God's timing. Will you trust God's timing? Will you trust that, you know what, God, you're going to work it all out for my good. So at the right time, I'm allow. I'm going to allow for you to complete me. Now, um... I, I recall studying like masturbation and pornography and different things like that. And what I've studied and learned is that those different areas, especially when you get married, um, they don't, they, they might solve your problems now. But when you get married, you have planted a seed that you're going to see a harvest in your marriage if you aren't careful. Pornography and masturbation don't want the same sex. They don't want the same sex with the same spouse. They want different sex. That spirit of lust will not be quenched because you got a ring on your finger. For some reason, we think that marriage is like, oh, it's going to solve all my problems. No. Even in your marriage, you can create an idol out of your spouse. And you can look to them. Well, you're supposed to make me happy. Well, you didn't make me happy this week. And I'm sick of you. I'm, I'm done with this. The thing is, you're trying to solve your inner 
emotional voids and problems with your spouse. You're, let me tell you, let me tell you this. Your spouse can't fix you. I know you want them to. I know you think they can, but they're not going to be able to solve all your problems. I learned that real quick as a single. A, per, a man made of dust is not going to be able to solve my issues. Isaiah 2 and 22, don't put your trust in humans because they are as frail as breath. You can't put your hope in what you can see. You can't put it in yourself. You can't put it in these temporary things. This earth and this world is temporal. Everything in it is temporary, y'all. And if you have your hope in this world and you're hoping that it's going to satisfy you, then you're going to keep going to that well and keep going to that well and keep on drawing that water. And you're exhausted and you're tired and you're shamed and you're guilt and you don't feel good about yourself and it's never going to be quenched. That lust will never be quenched. It's in you. That desire for promotion, for more money, for more things, it's never going to be quenched. God has to fill that money void that's inside of you. That desire for, for you know, to become successful and powerful. You got to give that void to the Lord and say, God, I'm not going to become a workaholic and be overworked. Or I'm not focusing on my kids or my, you know, my family. I'm so work, work, work. I'm stressed out about work. I'm stressed out about work. Your whole focus is work. But God's like, let me fill that void. Let me feel that void in you so you'll never thirst again. And I fill it with purpose. And the purpose says that God started this work in me and he's going to complete what he's called me to do. I'm going to trust his timing. I'm going to trust his ways. I'm going to stop filling my, my voids with food. And I think, and I sense that food is a really big one. You have a rough day, you just get the biggest thing of candy and you're just aimlessly watching 600 pound life where you eat this big thing of candy <laughs> you're just like I hate my life that's real those are real things that people deal with so let's get back to this word you gotta say no no I'm gonna put that the, the thing candy down I'm not a slave to my feelings I'm not a slave to my emotions yes I have them but I'm not gonna be led by my feelings I'm not gonna be led by my emotions I'm gonna be led by God's spirit I want him to lead me and to guide me a void filler for me back in the day was running. Every time I had a problem, every time I was going through something, I ran from my problems. And it wasn't healthy. I would like, I was single. I like book a flight and I would go somewhere. I'd just be gone. I just need to get away from my job, get away from the situation. I don't feel like dealing with it. But not dealing with it does not mean that the situation is going away. It's still going to be there when you get back. You have to face those things head on. You have to deal with them. We have to take God's word. We have to apply it and say, Okay, I'm not going to run anymore. I'm going to do something different in my life. I want my children's children to be different. I break that generational curse that is trying to stop me from doing what God has called me to do. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to let God fill my void so I never thirst again. That's what I'm going to do this whole week. When you feel that test come on me, you know when it comes. That test comes, say, nope. I'm going to pass this test. God fills my void. I'm not a slave to sin. I'm a slave to righteous living. And you just got, if you have to say that a hundred times this week, you say it over and over again, you're feeling lonely and you feel like you got to go on a dating app. Nope. I'm going to replace that dating app with reading this word and spending time with God. So then I'll create new neural pathways in my brain that say, we run to this word during hard times. We run to this word during good times. I'm not going to keep running to things to fill these voids inside of me. Every time I feel lonely, I know it's God drawing me back to him. You don't have to be filled up by this world. You don't have to be filled up by what it says about you. God wants you to fill. God wants to fill you up. He wants to make you whole. He, he has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. But you have to do your part. And you can also fill your voids with quote unquote good things like serving. Maybe you don't want to deal with your family problems. So you throw yourself into a church. You throw yourself into serving and helping everybody else, but you're not dealing with your own marriage and your own home life. Your first ministry is your family. Let's, 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 let's work on that. Let's deal with our own issues within our, our heart, and let's figure out how we can be better for those around us. You could throw yourself into your job and become a workaholic, and that's a void filler. As long as I just stay busy. If I stay busy, I won't think about what's going on. No, you're pushing it under the rug. And what's going to happen is it's going to come up out of the rug, and you'll become explosive and upset and people look at you like what's wrong what's wrong with you i just asked you if you want some water right you've got to face those voids you've got to deal with them head on and you have to tell yourself i'm going to do something different i'm going to fight back 
Amen. Amen. Well, I love you guys. I'm excited about you guys tackling this area this week. I want to hear about your testimonies, about how you didn't run to the food. You didn't run to all these external things, but you ran to this word. Come on. Love you guys. See you later.